Good morning and welcome to another edition, episode three of SICK. That's Social Isolation Class and we're doing science. And today, it's all about the theory of plate tectonics. Let me tell you, I really appreciated receiving all of that email from you last week, and we even got quite a pile of assignments handed in, and we'll talk about those a little bit later. But first, let's just do a quick review. So what's this part? Crust. Okay. Then the? Mantle. Yep. Then the? Outer core. And the? Core. And inner the? Inner core, and yes. The, and the inner core is? Um, it's solid. It's an egg. <laughs> and why is it a solid it if it's, it's so because hot? The, yeah, it's so because hot. Because it's the pressure from all the other layers pushing down in on it. I learned this from oh. Mr. Smith's class today. You see, even grown-ups are learning something from this. That was Gord from next door. Now, we had a question to answer last week. It was about Jules Verne, and it was in 1864. He wrote a book called Journey to the Center of the Earth. Well, check this out. Food we can eat. <laughs> it's tougher than leather. <laughs> we'll have new soles for our shoes. <laughs> Is any of this possible? Well, obviously not, right? What did we learn? We learned about, yes, heat. It's hot down there, right? Pressure, right? Solid rock. Come on. Mushrooms? An ocean? As if. Now, what is the theory of plate tectonics anyways? Well, if you refer to your notes, it is a theory that the Earth's outer layer is made up of plates and that the plates have moved throughout the Earth's history. And this explains why we have earthquakes, right? Volcanoes and mountains. <laughs> Okay, guys, a little bit of history here, and don't tune me out. This is not actually boring. This is pretty cool stuff. 1912, we're talking Alfred Wagner. Oh, Wenger. Wenger. He proposed that the continents were once a single landmass called Pangaea. Check that. All right. And that those drifted apart slowly and we're talking really slow like about this much every year one of the things that Alfred Wagner's theory explained was why these fossil shells like right there are found thousands of miles apart different continents In 1929, it was Arthur Holmes who proposed the idea of the thermal convection, which uh, would explain why these uh, plates moved around so much. And then in 1960, it was Harry Hess and Robert Dells who came up with the idea of the seafloor spreading uh, using sonar. The Earth's surface is covered by crustal plates. The Earth's core, the mantle. Tests revealed that the farther you got from the ridge, the older the seafloor was. So a geologist named Harry Hess proposed a revolutionary idea. New sea floor was forming at the ridge and spreading outward to make room for more. 
In other words, the surface of the planet was moving. Hess called this process seafloor spreading. It seemed to indicate that rock was being forced up from inside the planet. Check it out guys, the supercontinent Pangaea, and this is the lithosphere. There's heat boiling up from inside the earth, and slowly the continents over millions of years drift apart. And where they spread apart, you have volcanoes, and where they come together, you have mountains. <laughs> Oh, geez, hot. All right, so let's get down to work now. You have an assignment for this week, lesson number two. And number one, activity one right here ask you to refer to page 266 of your textbook and identify and outline the boundary uh, patterns and you can use you're going to use this map right here shade each uh, plate a different color and create a legend along the side of the map then you have to go to a website earthquake.usgs.gov and I will show you that right here. So if you go right here you can actually select the 30 days most significant. If you go 30 days magnitude 4.5 or bigger you get a lot of them. It's, a, it's really amazing how many earthquakes there actually have been in the last 30 days. I'm surprised to see that. But uh, your assignment actually says significant. So do that one and then you haven't got to put so many on there. And uh, there's a question about where those uh, earthquakes occur. And actually, if you click on the bigger mag or the smaller magnitude ones, you really do get a sense of where those earthquakes are occurring. Okay, so then all you have to do is, uh, based on the information on your map, you've got to answer questions. And that's about it. You can do that. Now we have received already a whole bunch of assignments. Check out this wad. That was in our inbox at the school. Just came out of decontamination. And this painting. Painting. Amazing. And then we've also gotten a whole bunch of stuff electronically. Check it out. I need to announce last week's contest winner for the first person to get their assignments in. We're talking assignment lesson one and the heat and temperature test. Congratulations, Casey J. You are the first one. You're going to receive this brand new sick water bottle. I will get it to you soon.
Finally today, I just thought it would be great to share with you some of the questions, many questions and comments that we've received here. Uh, I'll start with this one. Uh, in episode two, your mind got one layer ahead of yourself. You said the mantle is 6,400 kilometers thick, which is what you also said was the distance from the crust layer to the core. And yes, uh, he's right about that. Um, I've got a whole plethora of excuses, but oh, you might have to look that word up, plethora. Anyways, another one, let's see here. Oh, great vid. When are you gonna launch the COVID rocket? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the COVID-19 rocket. I am planning on launching this rocket, actually, come to think of it. We'll do it in a later episode, but, you know, great, great question, great idea. And by the way, I'm open to ideas. Anybody want to suggest anything, go right ahead. Let's read another one here. Uh, next time, wear a baseball cap. You might be socially isolated, but it would, it's, it's, painfully obvious that you haven't washed your hair since March 19th. Oh, that's uh, like uh, hate mail, isn't it? All right, fine. Okay, here's another one then. I have my stuff done. What should I do with it now? I'm glad you asked that question, and I have addressed this, but let's just review. It's First of all, you could just do a paper copy, stick it in an envelope or a baggie, and deposit it in the box that's located at school. Number two, you could take that paper copy and stick it in an envelope and simply mail it to me. My address was delivered in a previous email. Number three, you can scan it with your phone or an Apple device. Number four, you could just um, write out your answers. Use Word and attach, send it in an email form. All right, well, that wraps that up for now. Enough of that. Um, just want to remind you guys, really, really important. You got to keep checking your emails regularly because uh, that's what I'm using right now for all of this stuff. So remember that. Check your own student emails. And if you have any more questions or suggestions or ideas for what we can do with this, don't hesitate. I really enjoy your emails. Uh, it just helps me feel like I'm engaging with you still, even though we're like a long way apart right now. But uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. See you next time. Please stand back from the closing doors. Please select a level. Going down. This looks like a fail. Eggs. Fail. <laughs> In 1929, Arthur Holmes, he also elaborated on the theory uh, and that now is referred to as sea floor breading. Sea floor breading, which is deep under the ocean. <laughs>